Anyways, fam, this is kind of an interesting interesting story. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. It's very um, interesting. <laughs> we've been talking about this whole, I guess it's like, I want to say cultural divide, I guess, when it comes to the whole Fred Hampton thing, the Boogaloo Boy. We've been kind of all up in this for the whole last week talking mm -hmm. about that subject. And while we've been talking about but it's that. But it was also, it wasn't even just culture as much as it was class, too. Because class, we were talking culture. about how class is... The, the system to me it's capitalism imperialism is what breeds a lot of these situations like with racism with miseducation yeah all that stuff is all connected yeah you know i, I guess i'm focusing on the way that's kind of talked about the way people are saying no you shouldn't do this because the boogaloo boys uh because they know they're you know they're inspector clouseau they've done deep dives and they've seen from their keyboards mm -hmm. that the boogaloo boys supposedly are more of a right wing Mm -hmm. White supremacist, no bueno is what they say, even though we interview certain people. We interview people who are actually on the streets with the Boog Boogaloo Boys, and they're caught up in that whole thing. We've seen shows, mm -hmm. people making shows just going at Jimmy for interviewing mm -hmm. Magnus, <laughs> people coming at us for interviewing <laughs> Magnus, talking about the YPO and stuff. So, yeah, but at the end of the day, I think the whole message is, and we've talked about this, it's not about uniting, really. I mean, isn't it more about understanding who your real enemy is, right. that it's the elites, that right. the game is rigged. It's a the, class yeah. struggle. It's, you don't want a race war because if you have a race war, you're not going to have a class war. Yeah. Because the race war will inevitably distract the attention away from actually having that uh, class war. And, th and that doesn't mean that you're not taking into account uh, actual, you know, systemic racism at all. It's just you're going about it in a different way. Yeah. And I think it's important to understand, like, who is pulling the strings, who's behind us, because what took place uh, over the last several days in the stock market, you know, uh, a couple of apps that you do your trading through are really, really suspect. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, they pretty much told you what they did. They went in your face and said, this is what we're doing. We're pretty much going to stop you from what they call manipulating the market. I mean, they can manipulate right. it any way they want. They can go behind the, uh, the scenes, get insider information. Nancy Pelosi, how much money did she make from Tesla from her last stocks? But when the, when the common man does it, fam. Right. Different rules apply. We're going to stop you. I mean, it reminded me of the election, the way they just stopped everything in the <laughs> middle of the night and they started changing shit. Well, let's take a look, a little story to the inside of what happened this last week. It's really just mind blowing. And really, it, it just gives weight to our, our, our analysis and our thought process that we need to understand who the common enemy is against the, the poor people and the average people out here. It's the rich and the elites, and they have a rigged game, a rigged system, and they will always screw you, so let's stop fighting each other and fight these stop assholes Stop playing first. in a rigged game that you're never going to win. Johnny, you got the first video. We'll give a little explanation of what took place over these last couple days. Salute TLDR for those who are starting on this as the first video in the series. We just you start with this one. You have large billion-dollar hedge funds that have bet on GameStop failing, by short selling the stock. This means selling shares that you don't actually, I mean, you haven't paid for yet, with the idea that if it goes down, you pay for it later. Rather than do this much shorting, they did this much shorting, they shorted more than 120% of the available float. Normal average everyday people on Reddit saw this using publicly available information and then bought the stock knowing that they are going to have to buy back in and cause them to lose their bet. And what's been going on over the past few days is GameStop has gone from being a stock that used to be a few months ago, four to ten dollars, to twenty dollars, to forty, to eighty, to a hundred fifty, to three hundred fifty, and so on and so forth. This is not because the redditors did stock market manipulation. This is because a greedy hedge fund decided to make sure that they were shorting a stock that was over 120% shorted and that causes incredible problems and what they were doing is most likely illegal that looks like naked short selling now the financial press and the media have been really kind of massaging the balls of the hedge funds while pointing the finger at those evil redditors and i've been going over this in all of my videos you've seen them called hackers we went over that bs you've seen them called alt-right and nazis we went over that bs and now that the normal bs didn't work they're moving on to a more direct approach which is who cares what people think of our actions we're, we're, we're just gonna take them anyway today is <laughs> he goes into today what today is and how bad it is and whatnot yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy. Uh, so we're pretty much what they did is TD, TD Ameritrade, Robinhood, all these other. Uh, there were several apps. Uh, so yeah, that was the lead up to yesterday. Today, yeah. When then, uh, do you want to explain so it? So yesterday, yeah, all the, uh, 
all these uh, trading companies halted trading or halted yeah. uh, buying of GameStop shares, halted yeah. buying of AMC shares, because that's what those are the companies that the Wall Street Bets subreddit, which we can see here. Uh, Wall Street Bets. It's okay. here. And uh, this is where they kind of talked about it. They have a daily discussion thread. Yeah. Every every day. So um, pretty much what they decided to do was join in together to inflate a stock that had not as much value. In other words, a lot of these companies that short these stocks, these hedge funds, they look for these stocks that they know the company is going to be going down. GameStop is one of those companies they kind of studied and like, OK, they're going to lose value over here because GameStop is almost insignificant, right? You do, what do you get at GameStop anymore? You order your stuff online, right? Your your shit gets delivered right to your door. Well, you can download your games. don't know what GameStop yeah. is, you know, they sell video games, you know, hardware and video game discs. Yeah. And Back in the like days, that. we used to go hang out at a GameStop when we were in the mall, play the video game that was there, like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 Purchase yeah. your game there. If we, if we would buy a... Uh, when I bought an Xbox, the only Xbox I bought, I bought it at a GameStop and they called me when it came in and I went and picked it up. Yeah. They were the place to do that, but now with the big contracts and Best Buy and Target, stuff online. Amazon. Amazon is another big one. GameStop has become somewhat insignificant. And I, I look at it when I see it, I'm like, oh, it reminds me of a Blockbuster. So it was obsolete. so big. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's becoming obsolete. obsolete. Kind of like yeah. Blockbuster became obsolete. So, so what the hedge fund was doing, they were going in there and they were hoping that they were going to be able to short the stock. In other words, uh, take the stock, borrow it from a, a person who owns it, sell it at a high price. When it drops down, they rebuy it, and all the money they made in that, they'll give the, the person they did business with a piece of it, and they'll take the money themselves. But what these Redditors decided to do was like, uh -uh, what we're going to do is we're going to buy heavily into the stock. When you buy into the stock, you raise the price up, and therefore they were going to make money off. And I don't know, Johnny, in your opinion, if it was just about making money on this stock or if it was a part of like sticking it to these hedge funds that made their business known out there that it was public that they were shorting this particular stock. So, I mean, it, it was really about making yeah. money. That's what the whole subreddit is. It's Wall Street bets. They're like, yes. oh, you know, we're trying to see which penny stock is going to blow up and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so but they used like like the video said publicly available information to find out that uh, that that stock in particular GameStop right. yeah. was super short right. sold. Like, yeah. Yeah, they did what these these hedge funds do. And, but it's not okay when they do it. Yeah. That's the problem here. Exactly. It doesn't matter how you feel about these people for participating in capitalism. Because to me, if I'm going to be honest, this, the stock market, very few Americans have the, the money to participate in the stock market. Exactly. Um, so that's not even taking into account the vast majority of people. And to me, it's it just this is showing more and more that it's a rigged game. That yeah. this isn't real. That the, the economic system could be completely taken down if enough people got together and did this but even then even then the wall street with combined with our fucking government combined with the the oligarchs in our government have worked together to stop people from doing what they do every single fucking day yeah. and that in itself should tell you that you cannot reform this by continuing to vote more people in who are part of this the, the, i mean the, this is joe biden's uh well, we're going to go into that, but yeah, this, yeah. It, there's just elements of the government here oh, knowingly yeah. Yeah. involved. The laws that they have made allow this to happen. Well, think about who they're protecting, right? They're protecting their sugar daddies. They're protecting the people who get them their money. They're protecting Wall Street. Joe yeah. Biden is a Wall Street president the same way Barack Obama was a Wall Street president. The same way you know Trump saying? was, too. Yeah, the but the, I mean, but Obama too. and Biden got more money from Wall Street than Trump did. That's for sure. And he's close with a lot of these people in the financial institutes institutions the larry summers the Jan janice yellen who we're going to talk about they're green spanonites they're the same way these are the people like bill clinton who came along and they let them get rid of glass steagall so they can perform all these things you shouldn't be it should be illegal to short a stock to bet yeah, against it but they've got this whole freaking market where these hedge funds come in and make money off a of stock going down how is that even legal this was not illegal this was not legal back in the days and that's what they did this these companies mainly robin hood is the one in focus where everybody's looking at it where when all these people from Reddit and all the people got together, they started buying the f stock, inflating it. Well, they shut down their ability to continue to buy it, got information from the hedge funds that took a, a kicking right in the, in the mouth. Uh, it was Melvin Group. They, they took a beating in the mouth from the stock going so much up because they were counting on it being shorted that they stopped people, the average Joe, 
from buying the stock so it wouldn't continue to go up and instead it would go back down. They can sell their shorts again. That's Wall Street, these hedge funds, Citadel, and they make their money back. They manipulated the market from within inside. They almost just pulled the plug on the common man to stop him from making money so they can make money on the back end. What I think they did is completely freaking illegal. But once again, fam, the grayness of the laws is going to allow them to get away with this. So so you got the video? We have a video. Let's uh, let, let, here. Johnny's going to go into what happened yesterday even more. Thomas, um, do, do you understand people's anger, your customers' uh, anger, given that essentially you, you changed the rules of the game right in the middle of the match, at the most important moment in the match, even if your terms uh, and conditions allow you to do that. Do you understand their anger that you changed the terms of trade for them uh, just as things were getting heated up? I do, but when you say right in the middle of the game, then you're saying as the squeeze is going on stronger and stronger. But that's illegal. That's manipulative. So it's, it, it cannot be done. What is going on, Cheddar Chasers? We have a lot to cover in this video, so make sure that you stick around for the entire video. Putting aside diamond hands and memes for a second, today was filled with market manipulation that was borderline criminal. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of the video, I have to preface this by saying don't believe every single piece of information that you hear on the news. We are in the middle of a literal monetary war right now, and a lot of misinformation is being spread. That could even be me. I could accidentally be presenting misinformation from some of the news sources that I am giving you. So please make sure that when you do find an article online, you're not automatically gravitated towards one opinion. You have to understand that there are very powerful people at play here with a lot of money, a lot of bribery going on as well, potentially in this tug of war. With that said- Go ahead, you, what do you got to say on it, brother? Anything? No, I mean, I, I, I he's just, I, I like the way he's laying it out right now. Take a look, look for yourself. Because there's going to be talk, because we heard a lot of talk about the way the mainstream media was kind of going after these people. Even the guy in the beginning of the first video, we really didn't get deep into that, but they were telling, they were saying these guys on Reddit were Nazis, these guys were whatever. So what he's saying is analyze it from everything that's going on, that, just don't take my perspective. That's irrelevant. Yeah. Like, it, I don't give a shit about their political affiliation. But that's why what do they we do. Have to, why do you have to money the waters with that? Yeah. Like, I don't care. Like, this is, this is bigger than that now, right? Yep. Because you're, you're talking about... The legality that using the law, the law is already faulty because the law, what what happened was uh, Glass-Steagall during the Clinton administration is is the repealing of, of Glass-Steagall is what literally allows yeah. this to happen. And and that was brought to us by a Democratic president and continued by Obama, definitely not changed under Trump. And so now we have this because all of our presidents have been Wall Street presidents, yep. every single fucking one of them. It was the neoliberal Ronald Reagan and then the neoliberal Clinton. Who filled it. it was deregulation, then more deregulation, showing you that it doesn't make a difference. It's a Republican and a Democrat. And I like what he says. We're in a monetary war here, ladies and gentlemen, the little man versus the big guys. That's plain and simple what's going on. Let's do it. First thing is first, let's talk about what happened with AMC and GameStop today. Of course, restrictions on the stocks were put in place. You could only sell the stocks and you couldn't buy them. Now, what is that innately going to do when certain brokerages are restricting buying but not selling? Well, that is going to drive the share price down because now the volume of bids significantly goes down when people can't buy the stock. And then what happens is there are more sells than buys. That drives the share price down, causing a snowball effect of panic selling and that is what caused GameStop to fall from $500 highs in the pre-market to nearly $100. GameStop was down nearly 80% today from its pre-market highs. AMC also fell from its pre-market highs from $20 down to $7. And somebody please correct me if I'm wrong, but this was confirmed as far as I'm aware. Robinhood was indeed closing people out of their positions. This person here was closed out of a 4,500 share position of GameStop at $119. John, I get it. That's disgusting. You guys just, that? John, yeah. go ahead. Because they're just going to sell your stock for you. Yeah. I mean, when, Without when, telling you. What is going on? No, wait, sorry. They tell you after oh, they decided after, to do wait, we just We just closed out your position. And he goes on to tell you, we don't know what position this guy was, whatnot, if he, if he had stocks up there where there was a certain amount, but... They're just closing out your position for you. They're not e that. How is that not illegal? Like, I don't get it. That is, yeah, that's totally not 
to, 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 like what 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 is this? It says they sent him in, they sent this guy an email. Hi, oh. whoever it is, let's say Bob. In light of recent volatil- volatility, we are restricting transaction transactions for certain securities to position closing only. However, due to the unreasonable risk involved in brokering your position, we have closed your forty five hundred shares of uh, GameStop for an average price of one hundred eighteen dollars on January twenty eighth. So that was yesterday. Uh, and that's per- apparently been happening to a lot of people. A lot of people. And I, once again, you know, first of all, the fact that they have the, the gall or the balls to say that you cannot buy the stock. When you halt the stock, you halt it both ways. You can't buy it. You can't sell it. It stays still until they figure out what's going on. They didn't even halt the stock, fam. They just halted you buying so they knew they could short the stock. All these hedge fund managers, they were in on it together. So let's continue with the one more minute of this video. He explains everything pretty well. Now, we don't know what this person's original position was, but it doesn't matter whether or not they were in the profit and they were holding this from $3 or whether or not they were bag holding from $400. As a brokerage, you should not be selectively choosing to liquidate certain people's positions. And also, again, on the topic of freezing buying but only allowing selling and how that is pure market manipulation i mean that is just borderline criminal fundamentally the stock market is a place where people can go and invest in a company that they believe in in order to provide them capital to expand and scale that is what the stock market is for but of course there are people that make money trading and there's nothing wrong with that the market is supposed to be a free market and if someone wants to put a certain amount of money in the market and they're willing to lose it that is their own choice there is a massive difference between halting a stock which prevents buying and selling and only halting buying again when you only halt buying there's only one outcome that will happen the stock price is going to fall and that is clearly market manipulation in someone's favor and they're talking about its market manipulation from the other side johnny that's what some that's what the mainstream media and everybody else is talking about oh they manipulated the market by getting together as citizens (laughs) and saying we're going to drive up the price of the stock yeah not the manipulation on the other end where they just halt the fucking buying and drop the sale of the stock so they can short it and make their money and get it all back yeah exactly so this is complete hypocrisy there terrible so you had another tweet, right? Well, we did have Justin Justin Khan because now we're trying to make sense of this. Like, what's going on up there? Who's giving out tips? What's going? Who's in this together? And Justin Khan took down his tip and says, "I was sent a uh, C and D season desist, season desist, and I've decided to take away my last tweet down." Uh, but Wall Street buyer, you it, it, what's Wall Street, WSB? Wall Street bets. Wall Street bets. Users should ask for the following in the hearings. Because there are class action lawsuits. They're the ones who are having the class action lawsuits, whatnot, and stuff. We're going to show that, right? We're All communications that. between Citadel Securities and Robinhood during this period, which they should, right? You know what I'm saying? Citadel was the main, uh, the main company that bought out, that helped the, the Melvin Group, which was the hedge fund after they recuperated the lofts. It was Citadel, along with Stephen Cohen, owner, the owner of the Mets, to give them two point seven billion dollars to recuperate their loss, go back in there to do business, and they wouldn't give them their money, fam, unless they knew they had security on that money. So did they know this shit was going to take place that they were going to stop them from buying and short the market? That's the big question right now. Um, and in his tweet, he put down that he had got a tip that that there was communication going on between Melvin Citadel and Robin Hood and some of these other other uh, apps like TD Ameritrade. Uh, what's the other one? Well one. I forgot. There's a couple of them. But they all, Robin Hood wasn't the only one. There was multiple uh, apps that stopped the buying. Yeah, it wasn't just Robin It wasn't just Robin Hood. They got the most attention right now. Yeah. But it was other, other uh, apps that did a TD Ameritrade was one. Okay. So there was communication going on saying, okay, we're going to stop the people from buying. Now you can short your position. So th- a lot of people are questioning what's going on because, like we know, fam, it goes all the way to the top. We don't have to put in how'd you get your name now. I thought it was just kind of cute about the whole how'd you got your name, that Nick Zabo one yes. and stuff. So but is this the same thing? This is the uh, next part of it right yeah, here. Yeah. Want me to put this up for you? Yeah, I was just wondering uh, if it's the same. It is. Um, okay, so just so you guys know, um, and we're just going to go over a little bit of what the article says, but this tweet, just to specify, Janet Yellen, who is Biden's uh, Secretary of Treasury, was paid over $800,000 for speaker fees from Citadel. 
Uh, Citadel is who forced the GME and AMC to stop being traded today. Instead of a congressional hearing to hold Yellen accountable for blatant corruption, AOC will perform on Twitch. Again, so she's she didn't discuss anything regarding that. Um, and She just said there needs to be an investigation. Yeah. Once again. She just kind of, once again, it's just short-sighted it's very vague it's out there she makes herself look like she's the one really re you know raging against there, the like, machine there's no there's no two ways about it like yeah. what happened is unacceptable right what yeah. happened is um it's just it, it, it we shouldn't even like we there's no discussion it is it's fraudulent what yeah. what went on yeah. like um this is a good article too as well right? so yeah. this <laughs> This is a little crazy. So Yellen actually made over seven million from speaking at Wall Street firms, including Citadel, which was which invested billions of dollars in the primary hedge fund, now suffering as a result of the GameStop stock surge. And you can see her disclosures reveal over sixty speeches to financial firms, items twenty five, twenty nine, and forty nine on the list show her receiving a sum of eight hundred and ten thousand from Citadel and speaking fees, but that was just one um one example. And, um, yeah, well, we, uh, following a Reddit induced skyrocket in the price of GameStop, a company heavily shorted by Melvin Capital Management, trading platforms, including Robinhood, have started to ban trading of the security. This will likely lower the price of the stock and help rectify Melvin's uh, capital's immense, immense losses loss. because that's all everybody's worried about. Yeah. Um, was the hedge fund getting <laughs> their money back, right? Like, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, the guys who run shit, we got to make sure. That's why we say the money that was given to them, they have to come under question because are they going to yeah. give money to the people that they know they're going to lose it on, fam? Not $2.7 So. Yeah. And so Citadel LLC and Point72 Asset Management are investing $2.75 in a hedge fund Melbourne Capital Management, an emergency influx of cash that is expected to stabilize what has been one of the top performing funds on Wall Street. Citadel and its partners are investing $2 billion and Point72, which already had more than $1 billion invested in Melvin, as of 2019, is investing an additional $750 million. The fund said Monday, as part of the deal, Citadel and its partners and Point72 are receiving non-controlling revenue shares in the firm that uh, eventually expire. So um, there it is, the material aspects of relationship with market centers, and it explains exactly that what it does. Citadel Execution Services, Robinhood Financial receives payment from Citadel Execution Services for directing equity order flow to this venue. Yeah. And you guys can see um, the different payments. Thing is, is that uh, Citadel has a close financial relationship with Robinhood, right? So that's why, yeah, they stopped the the buying yeah. of uh, of GameStop. Citadel and uh, the other uh, group over there too, as well. Well, well Citadel, yeah. you know, bought out this Melvin Capital, pretty much, you know, uh, along with uh, uh, Point Seventy Two, which is Stephen Cohen's, the new owner of the New York Mets. The guy who uh, would, he put a, a, a bid in to buy the Dodgers, lost out the bid, eventually got the Mets. I've been, like, so excited about what's going on. But right now, he's going out there and he's defending himself after a shady deal. Now, as a New York Mets fan, I can tell you we had the Bernie Madoff scam, which really hit Frank Wilpon. And you had guys like Larry King that were going out there and speaking on behalf of Frank Wilpon. Uh, and a lot of uh, season ticket holders were actually suing the owner of the Mets because he was involved in that Bernie Madoff scam and made money. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, uh, so now a lot of Mets fans are like, really like, wait, wait a second. What's going on? Is this your Bernie Madoff situation? He got into it with David Portno from Barstool, uh, who's been out there kind of hawking and trolling people. And, and Bernie Madoff went after, uh, excuse me, uh, David Portno went after Cohen on Twitter. Keith Oberman jumped in. It was kind of a, 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 a shady situation, but you know, Portno accused uh, Stephen Cohen and saying, "Well, you were involved in this, so did you know something that was going to go on? There was some shady shit going on. What's your what's your point? You know, what's your play in this?" And Cohen said he had really nothing to do with this, whatnot, and you know, yada yada yada. Now the whole thing about Citadel, one of the main investors, whatnot. We see the leaks and the money going from Janice Yellen, right? Mm -hmm. Yellen was confirmed just I just want to put three days ago as the new Secretary of Treasury. You can see all the people even like, and it's so funny because I, I want to point out Bernie Sanders who voted yay. There was once a day when Bernie Sanders would go after people and say no after Alan Greenspan. Yellen is a, is a, a product of that Greenspan a night kind of mentality as far as what goes on in the market and being okay with shorts and faulty swaps and saying it's okay you know, with uh, Glass-Steagall. But remember when Bernie went after Greenspan? What does it even matter? You know what I'm saying? When he was going after Greenspan and he was saying, you've insulted workers, Mr. Greenspan. 
So, I mean, I guess he's all part of the okay to let them do what they want to do kind of people now on Wall Street, you know? So, that's that. Uh, by the way, too, as well, not only, fam, do you want to talk about this right here, what Google's doing? No, go go ahead. Google just deleted over a 1,000 negative reviews. <laughs> Robin Hood app on their yeah. app store as well. I think Johnny checked it yesterday. Yeah. Uh, it, they just froze it. On Apple, it's still like 4.7. At one point on Google app, it was down it's, to like one point nothing, right? So yeah, I saw some <laughs> screenshot of that or something. They screenshot it. He has it in the video. Uh, the, it's a really cool video. The guy yeah, explains you guys and stuff. Check out the video. But yeah. I mean, it, it's it's this is why we've been talking about the power Google has and who who is a YouTube owned by? It's owned by Google. And who's the head of of, of uh, YouTube? Susan Wojcicki. And what are they doing? They're controlling what you what you see and what you hear. And they're, you know, shutting down channels left and right. And it's uh, this is why this is all related, because you can see how your government is bought by corporations, which signifies uh, the definition of a fascist state. And that's what we're entering. And now you're going to have that in addition, be married to this this new age of that we have where everything is technology. So everything is technocratic. And you also have the uh the use of that against the people we're just they're data mining people and they're they're mm -hmm. they're completely just taking away any sort of info they can on you to basically target you in every single way possible so lawsuit fam yeah so this is the actual lawsuit the class action lawsuit that you can see uh against robin hood financial llc robin hood securities robin hood market and um, it's, of course, you know, it's an online brokerage firm that this is the, the nature of the action. Robin Hood purposely, uh, purposefully, willfully and knowingly removed the stock GME from its trading platform in the midst of an unprecedented stock rise, thereby deprived retail investors of the ability to invest in the open market and manipulating the open market. Again, a lot of these people talk about a free market um, and this and that. And we have we don't have a free market yeah. because they manipulate it for the wealthy. They they like it, when you try to manipulate the market and impose regulations to help people. They say it can't be done, but they will do it right in the middle uh, on the middle of of the night in the middle of when this is happening, and they will do it for the elite. They still won't give you health care. They still won't give yeah. you a stimulus, but they can manipulate entire markets. For, for the, rich. the elite. Yeah, and, and the whole thing about it, fam, is you know about this. We know about this. We've talked about this. What YouTube does and what they did over here is stop momentum. If you stop momentum, all right, we got a, a great video out there. People are watching. We get subscribers. We're getting in the queue. Here we go. Boom, 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 boom. Stop us. Halt us. I remember the Nancy Pelosi, we feed them video. It got And the, the clip ended up getting almost 50,000 views, right? Mm -hmm. And we were starting to just pick up subscribers. And right. all of a sudden, they dinged us for something months ago why they have to slow down your momentum if yeah. you slow down the momentum in the stock you're slowing down that now you create fear you yeah. create anxiety you get more people start to dump their stock that's what they did in the situation they stopped the momentum and the, in the middle of the rise they stopped it they just shut it down change the rules and then they sold the their stuff they sold they like they make profit off yeah. they profit off of you like for instance when they demonetize our video they still show their advertisements in our videos oh yeah even though we're not getting that money they're getting that money yeah. and it, it's it's crazy because there's nothing we you can do about it and that's legal because they're a private company and they can do whatever they want Bullshit. but that's it's no longer the case when you have such a massive massive influence there's it's definitely a different measure than some small little company you can't you know put a, a, a brush a paintbrush of, of, on a giant scope and say it's the same thing Let's show this little video of this common man, uh, what he talks about, this dude right out in front of him in, in New York right here, I think in the stock exchange. This is awesome. Robinhood took all of my GameStop stock, and without telling me, they took it out of my account. We couldn't buy AMC today. We couldn't buy Nokia today because Robinhood didn't allow us. They only allowed us to sell it because GameStop got shorted. The common man all invested in GameStop. The stock went all the way up. The same thing was supposed to happen to Nokia and AMC, but they manipulated the market so the common man couldn't win and the hedge fund investors win. They just want the hedge fund investors to make more money than the common man. But I'm here to say that the common man win. Fuck Robin Hood! Fuck Citadel! Fuck Citadel! Fuck Melvin Group! We're coming for everybody!
<laughs> trying to educate the masses on Bitcoin. Uh, uh, well, you know. I mean, uh, <laughs> he's right. It's what they did. They I did mean, it. He's right. I mean, I don't. I don't know anything about this guy or about these people that invest in stocks. You know, like I said, most of the time they have more money to spare, but not all the time. This was this particular uh, effort, actually, by people. Also, like they actually planned this to like to do to see. Hey, let's let's stab them. You know, let's see what we can do. Uh, let's use their own medicine against, against them. them. Yeah. And the moment you do that, they crush you. This is why you can't say that you can just, you know, play nice and push papers and being, oh, that they're suddenly going to give you something. They're not going to give you anything. Do you not see? Like, I don't know how much more clear we need to be that during the pandemic, they can... Uh, they they can use this the speculation against the common people on top of not doing absolutely anything else for them and amping up our our war machine that's all that's all we're doing and impeaching trump like those are the priorities of of, of you know, our government the thing i was thinking about today too as well when i woke up was like it was like wow this is kind of crazy that they did it but you know what it was like something that came of i think the elites got stung on the ass something they realized too is that people were sitting home during this quarantine they started looking into the game. Yep. And they're like, well, okay, well, how do we turn the game on its head? How do we use it against them? That's what they did. And, you know, you saw like a lot of, you know, we'll, we'll get into some of those videos down the road with what some of the elites say and stuff. But, I mean, wow. I mean, they. I, I'm very happy that the common man at home was like, oh, well, look how we can change the game and turn it on its head. We can use their speculation and the way they drive stock. Right. Once again, we're, we're, they're super inflating a stock. It really isn't reflective of where the company is, right? So the company is not right. worth the amount of that stock. It's just put in there because of speculation and money going into it, shooting up the price of the stock. But it shows so, that you, if you can manipulate a market that easily, then it's not a feasible market. Well, yeah. I mean. It, it, so, I mean, it just it just proves a point. Like, this market they wouldn't have these system problems doesn't work. If they weren't playing these freaking games on the back end, the shorting it, it's terrible. But this, yeah. but this is where my, mm, mm, the commie comes out. It's like. But you will always eventually, capitalism will always eventually drift to this because the whole point of it is to make as much profit as possible at oh, yeah. the expense of somebody else. So even if you put regulations in, somebody eventually is going to say, fuck the regulations and do this. We will end up here at the same time. This is why I think like there is such a thing as market socialism. There's a thing as that that you can explore. But as far as like as far as like this is an argument against capitalism, basically, yeah. in, in my opinion. Um, So. Facebook post? Uh, yeah, this was a great Facebook open post. Open letter? Yeah. So this is an open letter to Melvin Capital, uh, CNBC, Boomers, and WSB. Mm -hmm. um, and this was put on, on Reddit, uh, the R uh, Wall Street Bets. Mm -hmm. Mods do not delete. This is important to me. Please read. I was in my early teens during the 08 crisis. I vividly remember the enormous repercussions that the reckless actions by those on Wall Street had in my personal life and the lives of those close to me. I was fortunate my parents were prudent and a little paranoid and they had some food sh storage saved up. When the crisis hit our family, we were able to keep our little house, but we lived off pancake mix, powdered milk and beans and rice for a year. Ever since then, my parents have kept a food storage and they kept it updated and fresh. Those close to me, my friends and extended family were not nearly as fortunate. My aunt moved in with us and paid what little rent she could to my family while she tried to find any sort of work. Do you know what tomato soup made out of cafeteria ketchup packets tastes like? My friends got to find out. Almost a year after the crisis low, my dad had stabilized our income stream and helped out others. He was hiring my friend's dads for odd, for odd housework. One of them built a new closet in our guest room. Another one did some landscaping in the backyard. I will forever be so proud of my parents because in a time of need, even when I have no doubt money was still tight, they had a mindfulness and compassion to help out those who absolutely needed it. To Melvin Capital, you stand for everything that I hated during that time. You're a firm who makes money off exploiting a company and manipulating markets and media to your advantage. You, your continued existence is a sharp reminder that the ones in charge of so much hardship during the 08 crisis were not punished. And your blatant disregard uh, for the law made obvious months ago through your for the Melvin lawyers out there alleged illegal naked short selling. And more recently, your obscene market manipulation after hours shows that you haven't learned a single thing since 08 and why would you your ilk were bailed out and rewarded for terrible and illegal financial decisions that negatively changed the lives of millions i bought shares a few days ago i dumped my savings into gme and paid my rent for this month with my credit card and dumped my rent money into more gme which for the people here at 
WSB, I would not recommend. And I'm holding. This is personal for me and millions of others. You can drop the price of GME after hours, 120. I'm not going anywhere. You can pay for thousands of Reddit bots. I'm holding. You can get every mainstream media outlet to demonize us. I don't care. I'm making this as painful as I can for you. To CNBC, you must realize your short-term gains through promoting institutions' agenda is just that, short-term. Your staple audience will soon become too old to care, and the millions of us, not just at WSB, but every person affected by the 08 crash that's now paying attention to GME, are going to remember how you stuck up for the firms that ruined so many of us and tried to tear down the little guys. I know for sure I'll remember this. In response, here's a list of CNBC sponsors and partners. They include, but are not limited to, IBM, Cisco, T-Mobile, J.P. Morgan, Oracle, and ZipRecruiter. Their parent company is NBC Universal, owned by Comcast and GE. Uh, to the boomers and or people close to that age, just now paying attention to these millennial blog posts, you realize that even if you weren't adversely affected by the 08 crash, your children and perhaps grandchildren most, most likely were. We are not enemies. We're on the same side. Stop listening to the media that's making us out to be market destroyers and start rooting for us because we have a once in a lifetime opportunity to punish the sort of people who caused so much pain and stress a decade ago. And we're, ta we're taking that opportunity. Your children, your grandchildren might have suffered, as I described, because of the institutions that we're fighting against. You really want to choose them over your own family and friends? We're not asking you to risk your 401k or retirement fund on a single GME bet. We're just asking you to be understanding, supportive, and not to support the people that caused so much suffering a decade ago. And then at the very end, um, they say, to WSB, you are all amazing. I imagine that I'm not the only one that this is personal for. I've read myself so many posts on what you guys went through during the 08 crash. Whether you're here for gains, to stick it to the man as I am, or to just be part of a potentially market-changing movement, thank you. Each and every one of you are the reason that we have this chance. I've never felt this optimistic about the future before. This is life-changing amounts of money for so many of you, and to be part of this rare instance of wealth distribution from the rich to the poor is just incredible. I love you all. No, I can't seem to get a hold of mods and they keep fucking removing the posts. I have no idea how to get to this, uh, to stick. And it's important to, to me that people I'm addressing read it. So then he at the end brings up Mark's, which Mark basically says, uh, I have, which will surprise you, not a little been speculating. Part in American funds, but more especially in English stocks, which are springing up like mushrooms this year. In furtherance of every imaginable and unimaginable joint stock enterprise are forced up to quite an unreasonable level and then for the most part collapse. In this way, I have made over 400. And now that the complexity of the political situation affords greater scope, I shall begin all over again. It's a type of operation that makes demands on one's time and it's worth while running some risk in order to relieve the enemy of his money. Hmm. Karl Marx writing to Lyon Phillips, 1864. So, so what was he saying there? He's bleeding them? Basically, he's saying it's not a bad idea to try to do that to steal some money from the rich. To uh, use their own methods against yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that That's was That's powerful that letter for Yeah. That's so I figured powerful. we would read it and like this I mean a lot this is the thing. The millennial generation, we have experienced two two disasters, economic disasters in the span of a decade. It, and and like, you know, when we talk about Graham's house, how Graham always talks about how they took his house yeah. away. Mm -hmm. Now people, this is happening again. So some people are having their house taken twice. Yeah. Do you realize how ridiculous that is and how we live in this country where, where these people are becoming trillionaires are getting richer and richer and richer and r people are getting so poor. And we're going to talk about that in the next, the yeah. next section. 2008, they inflated the market and it just burst, right? They yeah. played all these wicked games. They had no regulations. And what happened? America, Congress bailed them out. They yeah. gave them tons of money. This is why Meanwhile, the people on the streets were thrown out of their houses. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, you know, a lot of these people who made these moves went out. What, what I just learned with, from hearing that, that uh, beautiful article, that letter right there, you know, they felt what happened in 2008, and they remembered. Yep. They remembered what happened. They remembered. He said he ate rice and beets and pancake mix for a long time. And that happened to a lot of people, fam, because they, they went after the, They took away their pension funds. Because they invested money into this market, and these people took their money and put it on the blackjack table and lost it. And all the people that you know were work for years and blue collar jobs had nothing. They lost 75, 80 yeah. percent of their pensions. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people so, committed suicide. A lot of people. Horrible. It was a really bad time for a lot of people. I mean, I was still, you know, I, I was still, I was just in college then. So I, but still, like, it was still like a. It, to me, it was still. 
a bad time like you would see like being in college then and everybody saying oh yeah the, the, the job market's gonna be awesome when you get out of here it's like no it's not <laughs> like it, it was you know it's a joke it's like well you're all, all these people are going to college a lot of them are getting in debt to go to school and then when they come out the market is gonna suck yeah. for, for most people to try and get a job yeah and this just reminds me, what, 2008, it was Obama. Now it's 2021. And who's in there? Biden. Same cats are back in there. Same Wall Street cats. Here's Janice Yellen. Here they are. There'll be no price to pay for malfeasance whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? And She's going to cover for them. She got money from Citadel for, for yeah. speeches. They didn't give her money for her expertise. They got it, gave her money for protection. I, so they can do I, yeah. shit like this. I don't think it would have mattered if it's Trump or Biden. I think these people would have done the same exact thing. And I'm telling you that because I think it's these people are rich. It's it's just they're they're billionaires or wealthy. They the, the, the wealthy class are the enemy. The, the wealthy <laughs> establishment elite class are the enemy more than ever. This is what that's showing. And the Mets are. How are the Mets involved in well, this? Well, no, I just talked about the Owen. Owen yeah, we, we talked about that. Stephen okay. Cohen. We already talked about it. Johnny, you want to talk about what happened in Europe real quick late last night so we can finish up the subject? Yeah, la some, late some last chats. night uh, in Europe where individual investor, investors have not been restricted from trading on the free market. GameStop opened 40% today. So it's just showing how it would uh, how it's supposed to work, right? Because uh, Robin Hood did restrict f trading on the free market. And I have a few other tweets I want to show really quick. Uh, so apparently people working at Robin Hood came forward to share that their founder received calls from the White House about shutting down GameStop and meme stocks, uh, according to a Redditor who claimed he was an employee of Robin Hood. So we're not sure about that claim. Biden has done more for billionaire hedge funds than providing us with survival checks. Biden is doing more yeah. to fulfill his promise to Wall Street that nothing will fundamentally change and ensuring the rest of us can survive. Uh, and then, yeah, so. Uh, I mean, it, you know, it. if there was a call for, like, <laughs> you know, a friend of ours told me this last night. He says it looks like they got a call from somebody up top of the White House providing cover. And it's like, once again, here they are, uh, you know. <laughs> it would make sense. I mean, uh, Biden had more Wall Street investors. I mean, uh, oh, then uh, you know, God, than, than God, than Trump. Yo, yeah, way more, and one way more from big tech. And they got they got different money in different places, and you know, once again, not not excusing. Who knows what would have happened yeah. to Trump in this situation? But well, these Trump, are the these reason are the I say that about here, yeah. Trump is because he's he's from New York. He was very big on Wall Street his whole life. Yeah. So like, but this time they supported biden overwhelmingly so I have a, a few other tweets just kind of tweets i saw yesterday uh this is literally retail investors versus institution and brokers it is it uh, is someone said they shut down the stock subreddit in 72 hours but let them plan the january 6 insurrection on that same app in broad daylight i got that right <laughs> Yeah, That's a good point. Uh, That's a good point. Uh, they let them the plan an insurrection. They were part of the insurrection, <laughs> guys. <laughs> like the, both of them, <laughs> the entire establishment. There is no Democrat Republican Party. There's two pretend parties and one giant yeah. aisle. How do I feel about my baby? Even Ja Rule yep. was like, "Yo, this is a fucking crime. What Robin Hood app is doing? Do not sell. Hold the line, because they restricted yeah. buying, uh, buying more." Uh, we had that earlier. Google deleted over 100,000 negative reviews. Yeah. Immortal Technique said, speaking of shorting stock, did they ever find out who shorted those airline stocks just before 9-11? <laughs> just asking. <laughs> you Wall Street fucks are worried about GameStop, but there are deeper questions that get brought up. Wow. So wow, Immortal John. Technique going there. And I was Why like, are you going Whoa. there, dog? And then I was like, uh, deeper in that thread, someone was like, uh, it was more than just the airline. If I recall correctly, it was act, it was the actual insurance and real estate on and around the towers. And then someone said, "Lucky Larry Silverstein." And mm -hmm. then I saw this post, and uh, I, c I haven't verified this yet, but a lot of people are saying this is true that he acquired a 99-year lease for Twin Towers just six weeks before September 11th, insured both towers for 3.2 billion against acts of terrorism, and ensures he can build new World Trade Center co complex if destroyed. His wife allegedly convinced him to attend dermatologist appointment on the morning of 9-11 instead of a scheduled meeting in the North Tower. Twin Towers got attacked, collapsed into dust along with his other skyscraper. Uh, files insurance claims uh, for $7 billion, arguing attacks on Twin Towers consisted of two separate events, thus double compensation required. That was for $4.5 billion and uh, builds the new World Trade Center. So that was interesting that I saw. Deep dive there. Johnny Deep Jason dive. Burmas. 
Yeah, Burmas will talk you all about it. She just listen these questions. It's a big club, and you ain't in it. And Basically. there's speculation going around here and there. Like we said, this whole foundation is fiat currency. And that's all it is is a fiat currency. It's all built on speculation. There's insider trader going on. The little guy gets shit. The guys up top make money. And when the little guy turns the table, they pull the plug on him. So really, we boom, just gotta boom, follow boom. the money every time. Basically. Every time. Anything every happens. time. Because it decides uh, where the resources go. A couple of our tweets. Savvy said a bunch of invest investment apps have completely prevented regular folks from buying meme stocks so the riches of the rich can prepare behind closed doors. Some people are learning in real time how the free market has never been free. Oh, yeah. So I like that. Great one. Uh, someone was saying that Robin Hood market manipulation was called in by the White House. And I, I thought it was funny. The financial equivalent of Obama parachuting in to force everyone to drop out <laughs> and endorse Biden. I mean, this is what they do, guys, in every aspect. There's That's no great. separation. We go around the world. We bully people. And then we come here and we bully people, too. We bully poor uh, people of, of all colors, but specifically black and brown abroad. We come here. We do the same thing here, too. This is all part of American exceptionalism. Johnny. Way to grab those tweets. That's why this show is the best one around, baby. This is That's why the Convo Couch is great. Look at the perspective you got. Three people working the lines over here. Johnny, way to grab those tweets and stuff like that. Last, gonna, last two, last three. You got tweets. two more. He's got more. The establishment can shut things down they don't like. Why don't we? I like exactly. that. Exactly. I like Fuck that. yeah. I like that. If we don't get it. Shut it down. If we don't get it. Shut it down. If we don't get it. Shut it down. Caitlin Johnstone, Lessons from Wall Street. Myth, the rich com compete with each other and ordinary people benefit from it. Reality, the rich collaborate with each other against ordinary people. It's True. Exactly. So she wrote a Substack article True. there. Check it out. And Shit. then uh, Ben Askren, uh, I'm so in on Wall Street versus regular people. Let's wreck these rich assholes. Ah, Ben Askren, my man. Yeah, fellow Come rock on. fan contribu con contributor. Loving the rock. He's on rock fan. Get over to rock fan. R-O-K-F-I-N.